the Konami code is quite possibly the most famous cheat code in gaming history. You're not worth your true salt as a gamer if up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A isn't permanently burned into your noggin. And thanks to its legendary meme-like status today, it's appeared in all manner of non-Konami games and other media, increasing in ever more bizarre and nonsensical uses. Well, it's not like they need it anymore. You can't exactly enter it into a pachinko machine now, can you? Or can you? So, this episode, we take a look at these Contra ciphers, these Metal Gear memorandums, and these parodious pokes. As I say, but hello you. I'm Guru Larry, and I welcome you to Fact Hunt. Five utterly bizarre uses of the Konami code. You'd think cheat codes would make the game easier, right? Well, sometimes the Konami code did quite the opposite. The third instalment of the Bioshock series, Bioshock Infinite, had a 1999 mode, which, you've guessed it, significantly increases the difficulty. The name itself is a reference to System Shock 2, released in 1999. No prizes for that one. An unforgiving first-person survival horror designed by Ken Levine of Irrational Games that was heavily influential in the creation of Bioshock, to the extent Bioshock is considered to be its spiritual successor. The mode would ordinarily unveil on the completion of Bioshock Infinite, but if you wanted the ultimate challenge from the off, entering the Konami code would unlock it from the very start. Similarly, in Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, the code unlocks very hard and revengeance difficulty levels, which would otherwise be unlocked by beating the game on hard and very hard, respectively. In Pop and Twimby, a brightly coloured Konami shooter for the Famicom and SNES, entering the code in the options menu unlocks level 8 difficulty, the default most difficult level normally being level 7. Daytona USA had a maniac mode triggered by the Konami code, making your rival races far harder to beat. In Double Dragon Advance, a 2003 GBA remake of the 1987 Double Dragon arcade game, entering up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right while holding select in the options menu unlocked expert difficulty. On the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis, Castlevania Bloodlines, Vampire Killer, or the new generation, or whatever it's called in your neck of the woods, and regions neuroticism to blood censorship, the Konami code also unlocked Expert's difficulty. Tapping the code on the title screen of NBA Give and Go for the SNES to unlock a super difficulty level. Ooh. Finally, doing so in 2003's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the Game Boy Advance unlocks very hard mode. Oh, and as a bonus fact, entering the Konami code on the title screen of the home versions of the game made the turtles produce silly bouncing effects while walking. Just like that Turtles episode where they visited the Ministry and Splinter was replaced by John Cleese. Who would have thought the Konami code can unlock a game within a game? It takes some effort or a whole new level of failure to unlock this one. In the thrilling world of Arnold Palmer's tournament golf for the Mega Drive, if you take 100 shots, yes, a hundred, on a stage and don't manage to putt the ball in, firstly, why not consider calling it a day, waking up your caddy and trying darts instead? But secondly, a game over screen will appear, and if you enter the code, you'll trigger a secret mini game of Fantasy Zone. It's not quite on par with the real Fantasy Zone, though. No. Was it worth 100 wayward shots to unlock? I'm gonna go no on that one. Remember RuneScape? 
After defeating Beastmaster Durzag, if you struck the gongs in the Pit of Trials in order of the Konami code, North North, South South, West East, West East, it activated a secret minigame of volleyball. This Gobi Volleyball Easter Egg wasn't discovered for some time and was only officially revealed during RuneFest in 2015. In Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, if you entered up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, square on the main menu, you unlocked a secret demo of Spyro the Dragon. And in a touching homage to the original, entering the same code while hovering over the title of Crash 3 in the Insane Trilogy remake, you'll also unlock a hidden trailer for the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. In 2014's Sports Friends, Tapping in up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, circle unlocked a secret game entitled Flop, an extra wobbly version of Pong. Originally on the PlayStation 2, in Zone of the Enders, the second runner, entering the code ending with L1 and R1 rather than BNA while paused during a boss battle with Vic Viper will activate Zoradius, a 3D minigame based on Gradius while entering a code again in Zeradius awards you power-ups. And whilst not technically the Konami code, but a close variant, on the arcade cabinet Miss Pac-Man and Gallagher Class of 1981, if you push the joystick up, 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 down, 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 left, right, left, right, left, the bell sound effect will play, and the ghost Blinky will change to Pinky. If you then press the start button, you'll play a hidden game of the original Pac-Man. The Konami code even found its way into Fortnite. Flosser of all platforms could enter the code to access the Der Burger minigame, a Gallagher-esque shooter where you control a flying pizza shooting burgers. The minigame was only available for a short time in the Battle Royale lobby where there was nothing except a black hole screen after Season 10 had concluded. Does it get any more bizarre than that? Well, duh! Some of you may have come across as being a bit big-headed entering the Konami code in random games. Well, you certainly did with these entries. In Justice League Heroes The Flash for the Game Boy Advance, entering up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, select while holding B on the title screen turned all your enemies gigantic. Bet you felt alright, Wally, after entering that one. <laughs> In 2006, the classic arcade game Frogger landed its way onto the Xbox 360, and if for some reason you wish to see a big leap in size, Enter the Konami code when selecting one or two players on the graphically enhanced version of the game, and Frogger becomes bigger. Incidentally, it's not the only time the Konami code had a function within the Frogger series. Amongst other uses, such as granting 99 lives, a Contra-themed game of Frogger will unlock with the Konami code in Frogger Hyper Arcade Edition 2. Additionally, in Konami's well-received football game, Yes, I said football. International Superstar Soccer 98 for the Nintendo 64. There are actually a couple of variations of the code. One unlocking secret bonus teams, but the other, when entered in reverse fashion, using the C buttons then holding Z before pushing start, prompted sounds of laughter to emanate from your television set. and made all the footballers run around the pitch with humongous heads. Just like in real life then. Forget about gaining 30 lives. How about the rather unwelcome surprise of taking them all away instead? With the code originating from Gradius, chancing your arms with it on future titles in the franchise was a given. Ported to the SNES in 1990 in Japan and 91 in North America as a launch title for the console, 
Gradius III saw players predictively experiment with their cheating teachings. But rather than gift them with power-ups, the Konami code this time blew you up instead. They're taking the Vic Viper. However, alternatively, entering the code using the L and R shoulder buttons rather than the left and right directional buttons did indeed grant you the desired power-ups. The game played with you. Sticking with the theme of Gradius and messing us about, the Konami code gave us a similar unfortunate outcome in 2001's Gradius Advance for the GBA, named Gradius Galaxies in the US and Gradius Generation in Japan just to mess with us a bit more. In this instalment, however, there were uses of variants of the Konami sequence. Down, down, up, up, right, left, right, left, A, B gave you the power-ups, but took away one of your lives with every use. Whereas if you entered either the backwards code with L and R or the standard Konami code, the game granted you power-ups as well for a few seconds, then made you explode. <laughs> Yet, entering the regular code with LNR swapped in did award the power-ups without penalty. You're toying with us now, Konami! Coincidentally, Japanese arcade game Parodius From Myth to Laughter, named as a Poman 2 of the word Parody and Gradius, saw release outside of Japan named simply as Parodius, with the European SNES port known as Parodius Nonsense Fantasy with boss fights including shooting a ship with a cat's head stuck to the front and making a woman who's just got out of the shower cry, it's no wonder. Anyhow, pause the game, enter the code before resuming with the start button and you'll be blown to smithereens. But here's the clever part. Enter BBXXAYAY up left and you will be granted power-ups. Have you seen it yet? It's a Konami code sequence, but with the SNES controller held upside down. Mm. In Darius Force for the SNES, known as Supernova in the US, enter the code with the shoulder buttons acting as left and right, and you'll receive a familiar exploding fate for your troubles. In Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game, typing in the Konami code whilst holding the left and right triggers sacrifices your own life in exchange for $50. The move named Noble Sacrifice can be exploited, however. If you purchase a health item such as chewing gum prior to the code entry, you'll be able to save yourself from death and may rinse and repeat for a slight infinite money glitch. On the PS2's Star Ocean Till the End of Time, originally released in Japan in 2003, if you equip the Rabbit Ears Chalice, obtainable from the Ursula Lava Caves, and then enter the Konami Code whilst in battle, you'll inflict damage to your foes, which is all well and good. Except for the facts, you then explode. Of course. What's more, again in Pop and Twinby, enter the code while paused in game, and on resumption, you'll do nothing but plummet to your death. Pop and Twinby didn't see a US release until 27 years later in February 2020 via the Nintendo Switch Online SNES library. But hopefully, word of what the not-so-useful Konami code actually did had travelled across by then. Hey. Back in 1995, on the release of Manx TT Superbike, not, by the way, titled Manx because the engine sounded like a whining Liam Gallagher, enthusiastic racers flocked to the arcades and later revved up at home on its Sega Saturn release in 1997. If one of the Sega developers decided to pitch the idea of replacing the motorbike with barnyard animals, however, you'd think they'd be feeling rather sheepish after their sheer absurd remark. But not Literally. Entering a Konami code variant using the bike, gears and pedals, up, up, down, down, left, right, brake, accelerate, turns all the vehicles into sheep. Yup, you heard correctly. Not barring console players, 
the code worked on the Sega Saturn version as well, which may have been brought from Woolies. <laughs> when we asked Sega for more RAM, I think they got the wrong impression. There are a couple more of these to get through, so I'll save my coat. Furthermore, in Assassin's Creed 3, heading to the Davenport homestead after Sequence 6 and whistling whilst leant against a wall, cause a turkey to approach you. Enter the Konami code and the turkey will turn into an assassin. A poultry reward, you might say. Is my coat still on the hook? Be careful, though, because it'll follow you from behind. Must have seen your Thanksgiving dinner. And, bizarrely, entering the code from Port 2 in International Superstar Soccer Deluxe for the SNES and PlayStation turns the referee into a dog. It's still able to brandish yellow and red cards, even. That'll teach you for hounding the referee. Although, luckily, the dog can't commit fouls. Otherwise, playing on the pitch would get rather messy. The referee was also later accused of dog whistling. Yeah, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll get my coat this time. Hello, you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified. And be sure to check out my other episodes. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon. But thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time. Ta-ra for now.